Welcome to E360 TV, the live streaming and on-demand destination for influential voices and enlightened audiences. We offer trending, grassroots, and purpose-driven content across a diverse range of interests. E360 TV is more than just watching programs. We offer the ability to interact with live shows connecting audiences to real, authentic influencers and storytellers while streaming to millions of devices. Real experiences. Raw conversation. One destination for it all. E360 TV. It's your time in the Becoming the Best You Conference in St. Louis is where you want to be. This three-day event featuring over 35 impactful speakers with 16 breakout sessions to choose from will help you achieve the best of your life for the rest of your life. Come and dance the night away on Saturday night at the Black Tie Affair and enjoy the live entertainment as we close out tickling your funny bone with comedian Jeremy Nunez. Get your tickets today and we'll see you there. This world, this world is changing more and more every day, and we've decided to change right along with it. My name is Dr. Lauren Michaels Harris, and I'm the president of Trajectory TV Network. At Trajectory, our vision is to provide a comfortable, a creative platform for top content creators and storytellers from around the globe. We're also dedicated to providing this world with content that is healing, educational, empowering, exciting, and above all else, entertaining and transparent. So right now, I invite all of you who believe yourselves to be global game changers to use the link found here and simply take a chance. Schedule a virtual chat where you'll have the opportunity to share your vision for your very own global television show with me, the network president. So use that link and together, let's begin changing and healing this world one story at a time. And remember, whether you have years of experience in front of the camera or zero experience, it doesn't matter. What matters the most is your desire to share great content through television and a willingness to share it with passion and with purpose. You might ask, how do I know if I've fallen in love with my purpose and my purpose has fallen in love with me? It's easy when you've lost your voice because you just can't stop talking about it. I'll see you soon. You can navigate the legal and emotional journey of divorce and exit a marriage the way you entered it with mindfulness, love, and respect. Solace Divorce Mediation is a full-service law practice helping couples focus on the health and well-being of children and their forever co-parenting family. Our streamlined divorce journey offers flat fees with an estimated completion time frame of two to four months. If you or a friend need us, visit solacedivorce.com.
right past me Pretending like you don't see What's yours for the taking tonight? Hello everyone! Happy morning! Happy Thursday! Woo! What is going on? Oh, I got a call from Lauren this morning. It was so exciting. He said, can you do the show for me? And I said, of course I can. I mean, why wouldn't I? Anywho, if you're out there, oh man, let me know you're out there. I need a hashtag live when you show up today. So listen, one of the things I was looking at on here um, this morning, you know how Lauren changes the the beginnings of the show? And I really thought it was cool that they had cereal and blueberries. It looked like hemp milk to me, all right? And it made me start thinking about our morning routines and what we bring to that every single day in the mornings. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit. Anyone who knows me knows I got to have my coffee, of course. And I like to put coconut oil in it. Uh, coconut oil is an anti-inflammatory. So what that means, it's naturally going to calm you. And it's going to help regulate, self-regulate. Um, I don't know about you, but for me, due to the trauma that I've experienced, a lot of the times it's difficult for us to pull ourselves in and self-regulate. So coconut oil helps me. One of the other things I like to do in the morning as well is drink my water. See the balance? Mm. So I find it helpful that if you have a relaxing, regulating morning routine, then it's going to set the rest of your day, you know? And even if you get up, even if you get up feeling a certain kind of way, maybe not your best, you have the ability to change that around. Notice it immediately and then hurry up and flip that script. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, um, so coffee uh the coconut oil and anyone who knows me also i know i know i gotta have my herbs in the morning i love it um this morning though what i thought was really fun um look i'm not a morning person okay if i'm up at five it's because i'm up from the night before doing some fun things like reading or researching or writing Ugh, i love writing but this morning, uh, my pug gets me up in the morning, my pug Tara, and um, it was like 525 or something like that, maybe a little earlier. I'm exhausted. But you know, it was really beautiful, the sky, and it was purple, shades of purple and pink and orange came through, and I could see the waxing crescent moon from last night in the trees. It's in my Facebook story. Go take a look at my Facebook page, Jamie Lane, J-A-I-M-E-L-A-I-N-E. -E. And um, I recorded the bird sounds and the crows and everything like that. Oh my gosh, let me tell you something. It was amazing. So, because I was feeling cranky, right? I'm like, all right, I know it's gonna set me straight. Mother nature, okay, ding. She is the original creator she is our original content creator mother earth is um so speaking of mother earth oh gosh ooh, it is almost time to bring in our guest today let me tell you something when lauren sent me the information to talk with this guest today i was very excited first of all her name is alliteration it's beth bell love alliteration so that was fun right off the start right um, one of the things I really enjoyed about her presence is the fact that she's classy and elegant. And she's dressed all in white, you know, and she looks like this uh, beautiful. It's funny. I was going to say Angel. And then the one of the titles of her book is Angel. And uh, I wanted to read something here. She is a number one bestselling author, which I thought was an, a feat in itself. Um, but one of the things about her is she's a rising sales star turned marketing executive. Uh, she spent more than 15 years leading strategic brand planning and more for the pharmaceutical industry. Ooh. Somewhere between C-suite level meetings and marketplace assessments, Beth began listening more closely to the world around and within her. 
What she heard led her eventually to ditch her corporate life to pursue her life's purpose of pollinating the planet with love. Ooh, more alliteration. As her inward journey deepened, Beth became known as the flower whisperer and forged new paths. First as an entrepreneur designing silver jewelry in Bali, then as a radio TV show host and author. Additionally, she's a multidimensional advisor for CEOs and psychedelic pharmaceutical companies. Beth currently lives in America with her rescue dog, Lily. Well, hey, Lily. Um, I want to talk to her today, though. We're going to bring her here, here in just a little bit. And uh, I'm going to let her tell you the name of her book. And I'm going to get into that in a little bit. But let's bring her in here. Everybody show some hearts, please. Show her some love. That's how we roll on bathrobe moments. Let's do this. If you're here, hashtag live, hashtag live. Let's do this. <laughs> Hi, Beth. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Happy morning. Happy morning. This is exciting to have you here. Um, so I notice it's dark in the background there. Where are you at? It is. I'm in California. So it's uh, six, six something here right now in the morning. Ah, well, thank you for joining us so early. I just said I don't get up on purpose. You do always get up <laughs> early or... You know, I am an early person. I absolutely love morning. So I do get up early, but I'm not usually showered by this time. I usually am legitimately still in my bathrobe, but <laughs> I didn't want to show up that way for the show. So here we are. Well, you look beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And your picture, I saw the the bio picture. You look amazing. Uh, I love your style. Thank you. So, so listen, um, this is a great perspective because you mentioned pharmaceutical industry. And this is going to be exciting because personally, the FDA approved system is not one that I approve of, nor do I, you know, go towards. So this will be interesting for me because I, when I think of psychedelics, I think of natural things. I think of plants. I don't believe, I don't think of pharmaceuticals. When I think of pharmaceuticals, I think of drugs. Um, so for me, when I see someone who's in the pharmaceutical industry and psychedelics, it's an opportunity for me to, I really, really curiously, I would love to know. So I want you to talk about specifically how pharmaceutical for psychedelics, when you're acknowledging that they are two seemingly perceived two different things. So talk about those two specific things right now. If, if yeah. You yeah, of course. No, I would love to talk about that. So what's interesting about me is that I do come from big pharma and anyone from my big pharma days would be not believe what I'm doing today. And people that meet me today are like, what? You were in big pharma? How is that even possible? Right. So it's such an interesting dichotomy. And I love to talk about it because um, I, I have a different feeling about big pharma. I, I we probably share most sentiments about big pharma, but I think that the, the responsibility really lies with the people. There is so many things out there that they can take naturally and in doing their own health is more important um, than, than anything else people could be doing. So I don't blame big pharma for their marketing because everybody's marketing to us all day long, every day. Um, that is uh, our personal responsibility to know our, our soul, our health. But what happened for me is I spent yeah 15 plus years in the pharmaceutical marketing industry, mostly in women's health. So I actually was serving a great purpose in helping women family plan and mostly with women women's health issues. So a little bit different. So I jumped from there and we can talk about this later because I want to get really right to your question. But I jumped from there to uh, becoming an entrepreneur, living in Bali, designing a whole jewelry line. And so there was a lot of things that happened in there on my sp spiritual journey that then just really put me into this huge tra trajectory of pollinating the planet with love. So um, wh whatever you want to touch on in there, we'll get to, but fast forward into your question about psychedelics. So I've always said I would never do drugs of any kind, you know, other than occasional alcohol um, use, like drugs have always been a no go for me. So what happened was a friend of mine was diagnosed with breast cancer and she took MDMA 
And then what happened as a result of that, she said, well, you need to try this. And I was like, yeah, I, don't, I really don't need to try this. I've just spent 20 years deep diving into my own spiritual journey. And the last thing I need to do is like undo, you know, all the great things I feel like I've done. So one thing led to another and, and I got invited to a San Pedro, which is a cactus ceremony. And, and at one point I realized, you know, I'm a flower whisperer. I know the power of flowers. I know the power of mother nature and I love that in your intro, you know, it's like such a beautiful example of how we should live. Um, mother nature, it's just out there every day, source energy. And so uh, I ended up interviewing Louis Schwartzberg, who's a famous time-lapsed cinematographer. He did the fantastic fungi documentary. And I want to talk all about flowers because, you know, he does all that beautiful work. He wanted to talk all about mushrooms. And then we started talking about San Pedro and ayahuasca and he just said, Beth, if you get the opportunity in the right set and setting, you really should try this. So I'm kind of going through the story fast, but it, it's 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 important for you to kind of see how I got to this because I was so anti-drug. Well, then I realized the power of plant-based medicines. And that really, really put me into a whole different mindset because I was able to embody a lot of the spiritual concepts that I've been learning for 20 plus years. So it's one thing to know things intellectually, and it's a whole nother thing to be able to embody and really shine the light in a whole different way. So that said to me, okay, I think I got to use my past experience coming from my pharma days, because you may or may not be aware that there's, gosh, over 250 companies right now, like proper, I say pharmaceutical, um, I say pharmaceutical because they are looking at studying a lot of different psychedelics that will be approved through the FDA. So it's a completely different route than what cannabis has taken and where they're actually looking to get approval. And I love that because that is going to help shift the narrative around psychedelics and psychedelics as awakening agents, as opposed to the whole war on drugs that happened in the 60s and 70s. So, um, yeah, so I think it's such a beautiful alignment. You know, we don't always know what's how our life is all like going to come together. So I find it completely fascinating that now I'm looking at, you know, I, I've, I've got my, my back, my background of pharmaceuticals and my foreground of psychedelics and that the two come together, which is why you were so perplexed by that and asking me the question, like, how is this possible that these two are coming together? But they are because, um, they're going to get FDA approval probably in this this year, 2023. So um, super exciting. I mean, we've already seen Oregon decriminalize psychedelics. Um, I believe Colorado. There's uh, yeah, lots, lots of um, lots of states that are looking at decriminalizing. Um, but once we get the approval for FDA, then then there will be approved um, psychedelics. And I should say there already is an approved psychedelic, which is ketamine. That's already available for people. So you can already have a, a legitimate psychedelic trip if you will um in a clinic so yeah so that I, I know that was a really long answer but i felt like i needed to kind of take you along the spectrum so that you understood like how does this pharmaceutical background you know connect to psychedelics in the here and now yeah well you mentioned a few things that i'm going to say you, you mentioned the marketing campaign and i couldn't agree more but for me when you are an authority and you're telling me you're an authority on health yeah. and you're giving people side effects means your physiological functions are shut off. So for me to say, and ketamine, I've seen the side effects. It's dangerous, in my opinion. I don't think psychedelics are dangerous. I don't think plants are dangerous. I think when a company who stands to gain billions and billions of dollars off of people's health, and you're telling me you care about it, why is it billions of dollars? Why are you involving these weird agencies and stuff? You know, that's my mind. That's how I feel. Yeah. Um, so for me, when you have a responsibility like that, people who run marketing campaigns like myself, I'm not saying I'm responsible for 8 billion people in the world. So I think they have a responsibility to say, uh, yeah, side effects means your physiological functions are shut off. So I'm not excited about FDA approval, anything, mm -hmm. because I think that once they start getting their hands involved, the nature has gone. I mean, can you imagine when I'm looking up at my sky yeah. today, it's purple and pink, and then I have the FDA coming over, dropping things on top yeah. of, oh, what are you doing? Why are you involved in my sky today? Yeah. So yeah. I am happy that psychedelics are coming to the forefront. I am happy that plants are coming to the forefront. When I hear someone say decriminalize or whatever to me, criminalization, legal, illegal, that's a state of mind. I don't, I don't worry about those agencies who want to try to, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't go into that. 
So yes. it's interesting that that that's the road we're taking. So your psychedelics in your book, let's talk about your book. Yeah. What is the title of your book? Yeah, the title of the book is Angels, Herpes, and Psychedelics. And the subtitle is Unraveling the Mind to Unveil Illusions. Yeah. So describe that title. Well, angels are on the title. First of all, I'll say that spirit guided me for the title. I was like, seriously, this is what the title is supposed to be. And it was like, yeah, seriously, this is what the title is supposed to be. Love so that. angels made the, the cover because I, I I have built a relationship with, with celestial angels, but also um, earth angels. And we all have them and we're never alone. So that's a big part of, of the book. Lauren's my yeah. angel. Lauren's my, I, I truly believe that Lauren is my earth angel. So that's, yes. Anyway, yes. I, I, yes. I agree with you. Okay. And herpes made the cover because I tell a very vulnerable story about herpes in the book, but it's also because one of the main purposes of the book is to help other people want to heal their trauma, whether it's a big T or a little T, we've all got trauma. We've all got the core wounds and it's, it's now's the time to, to release this trauma and to move into more blissful states. So, so that's on there, but also because of mind viruses, I think that is the thing to talk about today is the mind viruses, because that's all it is. Everything is of the mind. So um, that's why herpes made the, the cover. And then psychedelics made the cover because, as I mentioned earlier, um, they've become just an amazing uh, awakening tool that's taken my spiritual journey and my awakening journey to a whole nother level of embodiment, not just the intellectual knowledge of it or thinking that we know. It's kind of like when you read love novels, but you've never actually been in love and like you feel like you know what it's like to be in love, but it's totally different when you actually fall in love for the first time. I feel that way a little bit about psychedelics. Like uh, you are on your spiritual journey, you learn all these concepts and then psychedelics show you, oh, wow, this is like how we really embody these concepts. This is how we really live through our heart space. Right. So that's how psychedelics made the cover. Well, and unraveling the mind about, is, is, is all about unraveling the ego mind and, and getting your, your soul in the driver's seat and your ego in the back seat, um, and then seeing you know that everything is an illusion and you are the creator of your life. Exactly. That is why I have problems with FDA approved and all these yeah. agencies. It's an illusion. It's an illusion. They are not the authority. Of, they are not the authority of how we live. Yeah. So, no, I, I, I totally hear you. And I'm not going to argue that point at all. I just, you know, we're still in the third dimension here and we still have these regulatory bodies. They, they haven't, you know, we haven't come to a place where those have dissolved. So until they do, um, they do serve a, a role. And, you know, for the mass uh, public, maybe not the listeners on this show, but for the mass public, a lot of people are still very much in the third dimension and in this in this reality, seeing things in this way and, and the FDA for them. Um, you know, gives them some sense of, of um, I don't know, comfort. And but I'm with you. I get it. I get I get all the points you're making. I'm, I have nothing to argue on that. But it just is what it is right now in, in our third dimensional world. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. So when you talk about the psychedelics, are we mm -hmm. talking about plants, the mushrooms, the actual plants that that create? Um, well, let's talk about you talked about the trauma. What is the exact ingredient? What is it? Talk about the specificity of specifically what is the thing that directly correlates with our trauma? What is it in there that people are seeking? Well, yeah, well, a couple of things that I want to say, because they're what you were started to ask me. And so you were asking me about plant based. So there obviously there's plant based and there's synthetic. And that's also another like probably a whole nother show, which I don't know yeah. that we need to get into all the details about no. that part of it, because I do I do agree that one of the downsides of of this becoming so formalized is that for patentability and for profitability, they are taking molecules and and you know making singular singular um, molecules from the one. So it's not the whole holistic. And I think that's where you were headed. And so yeah, that that's tough. I think that's a. I know a I didn't challenge. want to keep hammering you, so I. I yeah, no, no, no. But I'm with you. I'm I'm, I am. I, I'm with you on it. And it, it is a, it is a real tricky thing. And yet again, in the third dimension, there is companies that want to be profitable, and we can call it right or wrong. But I like to focus on just what the opportunity is to help shift the narrative around psychedelics as a whole. Yeah. Um, so there is that whole conversation. And then um, what you were asking about trauma. I mean, one of the beautiful things about psychedelics is that it, it helps to just shut down the default mode network. So it shuts down all the tapes that are playing so that we can hear our higher self speak. 
And when our higher self speaks, it brings things from our subconscious to the surface and it allows us an opportunity to move through them from a heart space as opposed to a mind space, you know, sitting in a therapist's office and regurgitating the stories. And in some cases, we can't even regurgitate the stories because they're so deeply within our within our cells and so deeply within our, our subconscious mind that they're just programs we don't even know are running. So <laughs> when we shut yeah, yeah. When we shut off that default mode network and we really start to to hear our soul speak and we go, oh my God, no, this is who I am. And this is the truth. Not all that other shit that, you know, the narratives that keep running and running and, and that are holding us back from living our, our best life. Right. So, right. so yeah, so that's a big part of it. And then the other thing that I think is so beautiful about psychedelics, and of course, each psychedelic is different. Um, but there's also the, the potential of increasing neuroplasticity. So when we shut down our default mode network, we have the opportunity to build new networks within our brain and new possibilities. So when we were a kid, everything was possible, everything was magical, right? And then what happened? Well, we got programmed and we got programmed, you know, from our parents, from the communities we lived in, from society, from whatever, politics, government, all the stuff, right? All the programs came in. And then we lived our life thinking that that's who we are and that's how we're living. And so with psychedelics, it gives you that opportunity to just go, oh, wait, we can go back to unlimited possibilities. We don't have to stay in these little narrow, you know, these little narrow roads that our mind got us into because we created all these belief systems that aren't true. Right. We've all read a lot about, I agree with you about the reprogramming we want. Our neural pathways are fucked. We've been mind fucked our entire life by the masses manipulation, by media manipulation. I don't watch any of it. I don't deal with it. I just, it's not in my life. I just yeah. not part of my life. So for me, I see what you're saying about that. So for someone who says, okay, well, I'm really worried. I'm really worried now because Jamie scared the shit out of me about FDA approved shit. So how do we get, um, I own that. So how do we get um, people surveys? How do we have people understand, look, I'm not going out there just like cannabis. I'm not eating gobs of flour, right? You're not going out there eating just mushroom. Oh, this looks good. You know, that's, let's talk about, first of all, what, what are the psychedelics? You know, give me three or uh, actually let's talk about uh, two. Give me two of the main ones that you've seen. Let's talk about that. Mention two. And then how are those being used in a therapeutic setting? Yeah. Well, I feel like I want to say three. So I would say. Do it. Huh? Do You're, it. Okay. So San Pedro is a cactus, mescaline. Um, we've got ayahuasca, which is, uh, you know, leaves and vines mixed together. That's kind of a big trendy topic right now. Yeah. And we've got something like. Bufo, which is venom from a toad's back, right? So all three are very different and act in very different ways. So, yeah. So which should we, do you want to talk about one in particular or do you want to kind of keep them broad spectrum? Um, why don't we, I think people know about ayahuasca. Why don't we talk about the toad's venom? I think okay. that's a new one for people. And I, I want to explore things that people haven't heard. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that is a specific toad, his venom, um, they extract and they crystallize it and they put it in a pipe and you smoke it. And the the craziest part about it is that you almost immediately pass out. And my experience with it, and, and again, if you read in the book, you'll hear all the details of how this happened because I, I just feel like I would be the least likely suspect to to be doing this. So how I how the ceremony came about and how I actually used my discernment um, to to just really know that this is the right space for me, which is something that I also want to make sure we talk about before we end the show is, is discernment about where and when the set setting and server when it comes to, to psychedelics. Um, yeah. But what happens with Bufo or at least what happened for me is that it was a complete ego disillusion, dis, disillusion. So everything that I thought I knew about myself physically um, and mentally was, was, momentarily gone, which allowed me to actually experience the bliss of divine oneness. So a lot of people talk about oneness, oneness, we're all one, we're all one. And I was like, okay, I want to believe that. And, and I didn't really actually understand it in an embodiment way until I had experienced Bufo. It was, it was something that just allowed you to actually see how the whole universe works. It's just the most amazing thing. And it's so difficult to actually describe. So I don't know what your experience has been, but with psychedelics, um, it's sort of that, that, that place where, where 
every, it's like there's everything and nothing all at the same time. And it's so incredibly blissful. And I look at psychedelics as a North star. It's like the point we want to hit. It's the place where we go, yes, this is reality. This is the ultimate reality. And it is the reality of oneness and interconnection and knowing that we all are part of source part of source consciousness. And we're all just here, you know, beaming down as our own little bodies with our own little names and our own little stories, and our own little ideas about things, which is our experience that we signed up to have in this lifetime. So, nice. yeah. So experiencing this um, on a totally different level, I think is what psychedelics can do for people. But with that said, I'm also, I use a lot of discernment um, and I'm 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 really careful about how I speak about psychedelics because while some people say psychedelics are for everyone, I think psychedelics are for people at the time that they feel called. And I think it's really important to be in a safe set and setting. So having an intention, um, the setting, the 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 energy of the room, the energy of the people, the intention of the people. Um, and the server. I think that a lot of people, it's become very trendy and people are like, oh, I've done this so many times and now I'm a server, I'm a shaman. And, you know, serving something like ayahuasca is, 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 a, is a really sacred, um, sacred thing. And it, it requires ancestral lineage. It requires real knowledge and insight of the plants and and um, yeah, I wouldn't recommend people just run away and sit with people, you know, <laughs> in Amazon because it sounds trendy and fun. And let's like go, you know, yeah. It just, so I, I'm I'm really big on. I think I think psychedelics bring us that opportunity to go deep within ourselves, use our own discernment, and really get in touch with our own soul and say, hey, what's right for me? Um, yeah. So it's it's a it's a process. I think to it doesn't have to be like a process, but it's it is sort of a process of our minds unraveling. And I like also to encourage people to have a spiritual toolbox, to have that bridge so that when they do get those big awakening moments through psychedelics, that they can come back here and bring it back here. And that's the integration. And so if people aren't doing the integration, if they're just going out there, shooting themselves out, not integrating, not doing the work back here in this dimension, then in my opinion, people are just doing drugs. And, and I like to talk about psychedelics in the realm of expansion of consciousness and and really awakening here in this dimension and helping our other brothers and sisters to awaken as well to shine the light and show the way so so yeah so you could say maybe i have some judgments around how you do psychedelics and i say yeah i guess i do just i think that there's some safer ways and i think that there's some ways that keep us grounded and and bring the wisdom of the plants here um, because that is the point of life. We came into a human body to be here and now and to show up and to play in these, you know, these meat suits. So, yeah, so there's a, a lot to be said about psychedelics and, and a lot to know about, you know, stepping into a psychedelic journey. So when you were mentioning stripping the ego and those sorts of things and realize what reality is, you mean get rid of the limiting beliefs, the social constructs, like FDA approved authorities and agencies yeah. like that. To me, yeah. it means that you realize that things for me, yeah. uh, when I realize I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is all bullshit. Yeah. DMV yeah. is bullshit. I'm a grown ass woman. I don't need your permission to drive. I'm not going to do this. I'm not, you know, going to subscribe to those sorts of things. Yeah, but that's a very scary thing for a lot of people. A very scary thing to, oh. to lose to lose to lose these ideas of who who they think they are in this in this time space reality. Um, I, I, when you said that, one of the movies that comes to mind is, is Avatar, the first Avatar, and um, how we can live in a very blissful community. I mean, we can look back even to the Native Americans, which you know was not that long ago when they lived in a tribal community and how they supported one another and how they lived much more in the sense of oneness, much more, you know, with source energy, much more with mother nature, using herbs, you know, living off the land, being connected to the land and being in, in a very blissful place. Another story that comes up to share is when I moved to Bali, I lived there for five and a half years and built a business there, but I lived in the middle of a rice field and I had a lot of farmers around me and a lot mm -hmm. of Balinese that, you know, it's like a very community oriented place. And what, what I really saw there was the beauty of people who are connected to the land because the Balinese are so strong with empowered hearts, being connected mm. to mother earth, being connected to spirit. And, 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 you know, it wasn't until us Westerners came in and said, Oh no, you should have a newer motorbike or you should have a better cell phone or you should get a bigger <laughs> house or you should do a you know, better, better, bigger, better, you know? And it was like, and then culturally now they're in that whole mentality of, 
you know, industrialization, westernization, right? And they think that that's the place, the point to go to, the point to hit when you're like, no, you guys have it like so perfect. You, right. you get it, you get, you know, and that's why, that's why people can go to India and see people, you know, starving at the side of the road. And some, some of them, I'm not saying if you're starving, you're happy, but I'm saying that, that a lot of them are really the happiest people on earth. The Balinese were the happiest people on earth. The rice field worker who had virtually nothing was one of the happiest people on earth. He never had a bad day, you know? And I, I just, uh, yeah. So I, I think there's so much, there's so much we can talk about, but those, those stories came to mind, um, when, when talking about sort of breaking down this idea, um, of government and 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 how we participate in this but there's a lot that has to happen for all of that to to completely crumble i mean it, it, yeah the, oh everything. i don't think it'll ever crumble i'm just saying we yeah. have control over our own lives and like you said we all have responsibility uh to acknowledge our value and realize hey this up here all this external stimuli that we've adopted over the years yeah. isn't real it's right. not real for us. I want to talk about something else. Yeah. We're going to get off psychedelics for just a minute. Okay. And I love that you're the flower whisperer. I think it's beautiful. And I love that you come from a pharmaceutical background mm -hmm. because I want to have intelligent conversations with people because I really want to understand. I do. And I'm not, look, I get, we have to adapt. We live in a capitalistic, destructive, industrialized society, right? I know that well aware. Um, but to allow it to overtake us, I think. And for you, an intelligent, successful woman to be able to say, I know this exists. I know this exists, you know, and to be able to do that. I respect that. And I love that I'm also a writer and I believe we're both philosophers, if truth be told, because of the way we view things and see things in our experiences. And I want to talk about a little bit about you personally. Okay. And um well you're writing you know what was it soothing for you was it because you had trauma what made you why was writing an outlet for you yeah. well i always wanted to write a book but honestly i wanted to write you know the five pearls of wisdom the three tips the you know, <laughs> i wanted to be i wanted to be the wise woman you know i wanted to like be the expert oh uh, i feel that Right. But then spirit said, yeah, no, you're going to write about your own life stories. I was like, yeah, no. And they're like, yeah, yes. And I'm like, yeah, no. So we had a little argument. And then I was sitting in my rocking chair and spirit was very clear and said, get your pencil, which I rarely use and your white Ooh. notebook. And I did. And I sat there and within an hour's time, I wrote out the chapters, just the outline, like what I was saying. I was like, oh my God, I guess I am writing this book. So yeah, it wasn't my dream to share all of my stories and my trauma and my vulnerability. Um, but I recognize that the way we connect with others is to share, to share our stories and to share what we've learned from our stories. And so the book is really intended to, you know, I do share all my stories, but it's not about me. It's about encouraging other people to dig deeper and, and, and to jump into their awakening journey if they're not already fully on it. Um, and, and so throughout the whole book, I talk about a lot of different tips, tools, modalities, techniques that I, that I went through. Um, and, and it's, it's fun to, to listen to, to readers say, oh, you know, this really spoke to me or this really spoke to me and, and introducing them to new things that they just weren't aware that even existed. So, so the book's been a lot of fun to see how other people are reacting, how it's made other people feel and, oh yeah, that happened to me. And so, yeah, so it's really, it's really a fun um, project, but like I said, I, I didn't think I was ever going to write a, a book about all of my stories. It's certainly not a book that had herpes and, and uh, psychedelics on the cover. I would have guessed maybe something about angels, but yeah, not, not, not quite that level of, of, of craziness. In fact, if you read the intro, you'll, you'll see that I've, I've, I've had a lot of, a lot of things happen as a result of, of this book. And one was, you know, a, a now ex-boyfriend who, who basically said, why can't you just stop writing this book, be normal and, and, you know, and go back to a corporate job. You know, it, it just, it triggered a lot of people as well. It triggered people because when we speak our truth, it calls people to speak their truth and people don't like that. People are like, I mean, unless they're really ready to step forward into their true self, People want to hide behind their suffering. They want to be attached to those, those stories of suffering. And I so call it addicted yeah. to the victim mindset. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not for everybody and I'm, I'm, not the, either. <laughs> I'm for the people who are ready to awaken. I'm here for the people who are ready to, you know, not be the naysayers and the victims. And, 
Yeah. So, so yeah, so it's been really fun. Um, people have come out of the woodwork from all over the world and said, Oh, I found your book. I read your book and, and this, that, and the other. And so that's what it's about. It's about building community and it's about pollinating the planet with love. And the only way we can do that is when we love ourselves and when we, we can shine our light and show the way we're not here to heal anybody. We're just here to heal ourselves and yep. Shine the light, show the way. And whoever wants to follow can follow. And who doesn't, I mean, I don't mean follow in a, you know, in that sense, I just mean, follow in the movement, right? Follow in the, right. the we're here to, um, oops, I just spilled my water. We're here to, um, yeah, to really awaken the planet. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that because I do believe that, um, the way we change the world is yeah. within ourselves. We start with ourselves first, get to know yeah. ourselves first, yeah. be truthful with ourselves. How hard of that a journey, you know, what's funny the journey to truth, right? And, and I've been seeking truth since I was a little girl. Like that's just who I am, right? I need to know the beginning, the middle, the end. I want to know what comes behind there, by over there. I need to know. I need to know that. I want to know that because I want to understand how things work. So when I was looking for truth and I'm like, why don't people want truth? And I finally, you know, awakened. And I'm like, yeah, it's devastating. It's like you said, people don't want to see that. They don't want to feel it because it's easier to hide. Beyond. They call it a comfort zone, which is weird to me. It's not comfortable. Um, they they stay here in this addicted to victim mindset mm -hmm. because it's scary. Beth. Yeah. It's scary. Once you find out the truth, you're like, what's the fucking point? Why am I yeah. even here? So yeah. talk about a point where you felt, well, now I know all this. <laughs> I've achieved life. Why even go? You know, do you know what I'm saying when I say that? That moment when you're like, when you, after the awakening, at least for me, it was like, well, now what? I feel yeah, like. I well, uh, yeah, I hear what you're saying. And it, you are always going to be challenged to the next level. There is, yeah. you know, it's like, as soon as you think you've hit that. something, like more shit will come up, the deeper pain bodies show up and then you're working through something else. So, and that's also my point with psychedelics is that you go out there, you see it, you know it, but you still have to come back here, embody it and live it. <laughs> and living it because the mind is so strong and that's why we need to unravel our minds right like one of the things i was i used to say is oh my god like the last thing i want to do is lose my mind because my mind was my my mind was my tool i thought that was my strength right but now i can see oh i get that my mind <laughs> i need to be the master of my mind and I need to use it as a tool, not let the mind use me as its tool. And that's what most people are running on is the mind running them. You know, the mind is, is running them and we need to be getting the mind in the back seat and the soul in the driver's seat. So yeah, it's a never ending process. I wish I could say, oh yeah. I mean, well, look, Buddha, you know, Krishna, Jesus, you know, many enlightened masters have showed us a way where we can live in an enlightened embodiment state pretty much 24 seven, but for most of us, it's a journey and we're on it. And we're constantly going to find that more things come our way, more pain bodies that are deep within our cellular level. Because even when we clear our own, there's still ancestral lineage, right? There's still, there's still the, the, and you talked about this early on in this interview, there's still the external environment. So the external environment is going to continue to bring you information and triggers so you can reflect and say, okay, well, this is the experience I've signed up for. What, why am I asking that to come into my experience? Why am I? And if we don't change our external you know, environment, you go do a psychedelic journey, but you don't change anything about your environment, then you're going to go back to the same programs, right? So, right. and that's the work and that work is hard. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. there's moments where it's like, it's easy and you're in flow, but then a lot of times it's hard. It's the constant re re programming of the mind to, to get those programs out. And so, yeah, uh, until we get, you know, the, even more of the masses really waking up, we're going to get hard, hard lessons from the external environment that keep coming at us, that keep telling us that we're the crazy ones, that, you know, we're, we don't, we don't know what we're talking about. And it's like, no, we get it, but we have to find ways to, to, yeah, to bring our brothers and sisters along with us to wake up and to see things a little bit differently. And how we do that, we all have our unique way. You have yours. I have mine. I feel blessed that, that, that I'm, I'm in my calling and that I, I know who I am and I can see how my my interesting trail of life experiences have led me to this point where I go, ah, I'm an awakening agent. I'm here to help people. I'm here to normalize the ideas about waking up and seeing that all of this is an illusion. You know, I mean, yeah. 
it's it's yeah so there's there's lineages of of whether it's religious leaders or whether it's a course in miracles or urantia or you know there's so many documents and it's it's all around us but people just kind of want to keep missing it and not seeing it you know people buy a course in miracles i don't know if you're familiar with that but that was one of my early things that really helped me having nothing to do with psychedelics but really helped me to understand that the mind is really running our lives and a lot of people pick that book up and they they don't actually read it for 10 years because there's just like this you know the ego mind is always at bay i don't want to lose my job i don't want to lose my job right the ego mind i don't want to lose my job so i'm going to keep you wrapped into these stories and until you actually really make the effort, the intention to step forward and say, no, 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 I'm not going to, I'm not going to be there. I'm going to be here in one with my soul and, and with source and be connected and receive and receive guidance in that way. Then you're always going to be working on the railroad. You're always going to be in the, in the system. Um, and, and right. look, the system serves us at times. The system served mm -hmm. me, it brought me to where I am. Um, I'm happy to not be in the system, but yeah. So we all have our own journey and I don't judge who's, who's in what system or no system or, you know, where we're at. We're all in our awakening journey and we're all going to continue to get, you know, even though we feel like, oh, we're awake, uh, we're still going to get all the shit. We're still going to get more lessons. We're still going to, it's still going to come at us. In fact, even more so at times because we've, we've, you know, built our toolbox and we're, we're stronger. So yeah, it's never ending. Oh, I agree. It's never ending. I want to go through some questions here and see if we can, um, there was a few, I'm not really, are we still out there guys? I need to see hearts. I need to see likes. I need to see something, need to see something. Let's do a question for just 30 seconds or more. And then there's a couple more things I want to do. We only have a few more minutes. Um, so da, 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 da. I don't really see any more questions like I did at the beginning. Um, oh, right. Which specific psychedelics are available to people and the ones you would recommend for this awakening and ego deflation and removing the barriers and the connection with the oneness that you described and the one that would have the longest lasting effect? Well, first of all, I never recommend psychedelics for anybody because I think it's a very personal soul based process. And I think you, each person needs to get in touch with their soul and feel which one they're called to. For me, I started with San Pedro, but I do, but I don't say that everyone should start there. Everyone needs to start where they feel the most comfortable and the most called. Um, you know, another example was, uh, I, I, I thought, ooh, ayahuasca, that sounds interesting, but I don't know. And and um, I was just kind of hesitant because I always heard about how strong it is. Yeah. And so I had a dream one night and the dream was I was back in like more of a corporate environment up on a stage talking and there was a gentleman next to me talking, very dark skin. And afterwards I walked up to him and I said in my dream, I said, I just think we need to work together. And this man looked at me and gave me a complete transmission through his eyes to my eyes, to my soul. And he said, ayahuasca is the way. And I was like, oh, my God. So I was like, I think that was my calling. I think I, I think, you know, grandmother just spoke to me. And um, yeah, like, right. So um, but it wasn't until a year later. And I had lots of opportunities to do ayahuasca ceremonies, but I just you know, whatever it was, it wasn't the right set, the right set and setting. It wasn't the right server. It just, you know, like I just kept using my discernment, which place feels right for me. And then the place came available. And when I talked to the server to do my discernment and to feel into his energy and what his intentions were, I, uh, I ended up, um, do we need to take a quick break? Nope. Keep going. Okay. You have like 20 okay. seconds. Okay. So he ended up telling me that, that probably the individual that I had that transmission from was, was a gentleman who, who was like sort of the, not the founder, but someone who discovered ayahuasca in the jungles in Brazil. So, so yeah, so it's always interesting. We don't know exactly how uh, and which ones we're going to be called to. Do you take them recurrently or have you only done a few one or two times to get that enlightenment or is it recurring? Um, I, I don't take them recurring. I I've, I've, kind of had a system in the sense that I've, I've said, I'm going to do a set of three with, with different ones. Um, and, and then I'm going to pause there, but I don't, I, you know, I don't do it that often. I think, again, I'm not setting guidelines for anybody. It's up to you, but, um, probably six months is a good, cause I, I believe so much in integration, um, and really taking the lessons and the learnings. Cause otherwise we're just, we're just kind of, cause our mind also gets back involved in this, which is a whole nother story, but yeah. So, so I, I am not some, I, some people microdose every single day, you know, that's a possibility too. But again, I'm not someone to, to say to anyone what, what is right for them or what they should start with or what they should do or why they should do or shouldn't do. I can only share my personal experiences and encourage them to get really deeply in touch with their soul to know which one is right for them at the right time the right place all right cool 
You have one minute. Say something that I didn't ask you. You want to say you want people to know for one minute and then I'm going to wrap it up and then that'll be the show. Yeah, I just the one thing I would say is wake up, you know, even if you're awake, keep going, just keep yeah. going. It's a beautiful journey. It's painful, but it's le way less painful than living in the suffering of anything that we have stored at a cellular level. So have fun on the journey. I love that. I love that. And I love everything you said about oneness. One of my books coming out this year is about oneness. I love that you said that. Um, that's number two in my things of radical philosophies is achieving oneness. Um, the way you said source, we are the source. Yeah. And if we realize that we truly are the source, that our mind is the source, our DNA, our raw primal ancestry. And if we strip that all away, whether or not you choose to do psychedelics or anything that you choose, if we strip away all of these things that are fake, our clothes, our everything, all those weird agencies and things like that. And we just get raw with it. What's left? Our beautiful minds, our beautiful faces, our wrinkles, our skin, our flesh. You know what I'm saying? Our soul, the way we touch the dirt. I love that you said connection and oneness and source. You know what? Why don't you take 20 more seconds, say something, tell them to go buy your book. Say something else and then we're going to end the show. I want you to have the last word. Yeah, thank you. Bethbell.me is the website. Um, my YouTube channel is Beth Bell Live. There's a lot more videos, a lot more insights you can get. Um, there's also the Bliss Book Club where you can sign up and, and hear more insights about the book and, and my discussions about the storylines. Again, it's about your storylines, not so much about mine. I just use them as tools to get deep into some of the suffering and, and blow it up and go to bliss. I love it. I got your links. I'm going to post it. Thank you so much, Beth. Thank oh my you. gosh, you are a beautiful, intelligent woman. I'm so glad I had the pleasure of talking with you today. This was Thank amazing. You. Yeah, it was a great discussion. Thank you so much. She's a bestseller too. I know I said that at the beginning. I'm just reminding people, just go check her out. Thanks, Beth. We're going to go, guys. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yeah. Join us tomorrow or maybe there isn't a show. Maybe I'll see you tomorrow. Maybe I won't. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Um, thank you so much, everybody. Let's give us some hearts, loves, likes. I'm going to put her things in here. It was bethbell.me. Go to her YouTube channel. If you do youtube.com, it's slash bethbell live. I'm going to put those links. Ah, there they are. We were a little early. I was told I had to be out of here at five or four tells. So I wanted us to say whatever we wanted to say. Um, awesome. I guess we can just talk then. Let's do it. Show me your soul. Baby, I'll show you mine. Show me your soul. Honey, it's way past time. How expensive do I have to be? Need I spell it out before you get it? Show me your soul And honey, I'll show you I'll show you mine I'll show you mine Oh, I'm standing right here Holding up a sign